G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. So, Bitcoin price of 300,000 is a realistic target based on several uh, on-chain metrics. So, uh, an analyst from Citibank, one of the biggest banks out there in the world, has come out and said they believe Bitcoin can go to $318,000 and that they also believe the bull run could push past December next year and may actually uh, yeah, push into sort of 2022 and maybe even sort of late 2022. Now the the bull markets have been kind of stretching out further, so they've lasted longer, but the gain, the returns have been a little bit smaller. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but look, Bitcoin at 300,000, that would be very, very interesting. So it says here, Bitcoin price could reach 318,000 according to a senior exec at a US-based financial giant Citibank. Several on-chain on metrics seem to support this bullish scenario in the long term. Not sure if it'll get there, but look, I'd love to be proven wrong. I, I think it's gonna be lower, but again, yeah, love to be proven wrong. A new report from Citibank's managing director, Tom Fitzpatrick, states that Bitcoin could reach 318,000 and that this cryptocurrency is the digital gold of the 21st century. Tom thinks BTC could touch that price by December 2021. There you go. So that's you know a little over a year away, 13 months away. Although uh, it is a higher price target, some on-chain metrics uh, could be suggesting something similar. The infamous stock-to-flow uh, Bitcoin model would put Bitcoin price at at least 100,000 by the end of 2021. The Citibank's report looks at the past price action of Bitcoin from 2011 until 2020. According to it, Bitcoin price seems to be quite symmetrical over the last seven years. The, the past rally from January 2015 to do some, God, I'm struggling again, to December 2017 had BTC priced uh, multiple uh, the bit had the BTC price multiply by 121 times. The first significant rally from 2011 to 2013 was a 55,000 percent increase for Bitcoin price. Considering these ratios, it would seem that the next rally from 2018 until the top would put BTC at 318,000 by the end of 21. Other prominent analysis, analysts are also extremely optimistic about Bitcoin. Mike McGlone, a Bloomberg intelligence analyst, sees Bitcoin at 100,000 by 2025. Although the outlook is less aggressive, it is still significantly bullish. Yeah, it's very hard to know. I mean, yeah, very hard to know. By the sound of it though, I think 100,000 is, you know, kind of the minimum that most people are thinking that it'll go to. So they think it's likely to go higher. I'm okay with $100,000. I don't mind that at all. All right. <sighs> Something that's really depressing. So Coinbase goes down as Bitcoin nears 17000 k You know, we've got all this regulation and stuff happening uh, within the cryptocurrency space. This needs to be looked at. This is, it's like clockwork. Coinbase will go down as soon as Bitcoin starts to push a little bit too high. That is not what free markets are about. They really hinder the price, and I can only assume that there's an agenda behind that. Uh, you know, exactly what it is, I don't know. Maybe really rich people are telling, uh, you know, Coinbase to, you know, keep the price down so they can accumulate as much as they can before the bull run really gets going, or there's something for them that's in it. Oh, I really don't know, but all I know is it is literally like clockwork. Bitfinex was exactly the same. They would just go down. So them and uh, Coinbase, how can you know Coinbase especially be this massive company and every time Bitcoin starts to push a little bit too high, it goes down uh, and then halts it all. I don't have, uh, I don't use Coinbase. I did have an account once. I never really used it. And now I just straight out refuse to use it uh, based on this. They are really disappointing and annoying would probably be the best way. I, yeah, I, I would love to know why it is that they have to keep going down. What is it that they're doing? Because they're going to say, oh, it's some technical thing, blah, blah, rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Absolute garbage. It is not that because it systematically happens. They would have been able to fix it if it was just some kind of, you know, something technical, but it's been happening for ages. 
So Coinbase, get your act together, you know. Again, it's probably not their act together. I, I think there's a hidden agenda behind it. I just don't know what it is. I can't wrap my head around why they would do it. I don't know why they wouldn't want Bitcoin and all other crypto assets to, you know, go sky high. But, you know, let me know down below in the comments what your th thoughts are, why Coinbase uh, continues to go down whenever Bitcoin uh, pushes up too high. Uh, I'm open to all sorts of theories. <laughs> All right, now, another interesting story, and I really like this one. So the Skype co-founder keeps personal wealth in Bitcoin and Ethereum. This gentleman is going to do extremely well in the future, I believe. Personal opinion, not financial advice. Uh, and look, I've done basically the same thing. I've put my money into cryptocurrencies. I believe they're the future, and that's where it is. Not just cryptocurrencies. I do have some silver. I do have some gold. I'd like to get into property in the future. But I think cryptocurrencies, and particularly those two, are not a bad uh, place to put your, yeah, your savings. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. That's what I've done. You've got to work out whether that's good for you. But Skype co-founder... I'm going to butcher this name, I'm sure. I'm going to say that's Jan Talon holds most of his wealth in cryptocurrency. The Estonian engineer donated 350 Ethereum and 50 Bitcoin, oh, 50 Bitcoin, nice, to UK-based firm Faculty AI in 2018-2020. The company still holds onto most of the crypto uh, it received from Talon. So there you go. Uh, 50 Bitcoin, pretty good, and 350 Ethereum, not too bad either. Uh personal wealth in cryptocurrency as and had been for some time now. Uh, since Skype was sold to eBay for around $2.6 billion in 2005, uh, Talon has not launched any new enterprises, but has invested in many. <laughs> yeah. There you go. $2.6 billion. I mean, he's a co-founder, so I'm guessing he didn't get all of it. But I'm saying, I'm oh, sorry, I'm thinking that, yeah, he wouldn't have to do too much. He could just live a life of... Uh, investing in nothing else. He wouldn't have to build anything else uh, unless it was a sort of passion for him. Um, one of them was Faculty AI, a London-based company focused on machine learning systems which received digital assets from Talon, uh, Talon on at least two occasions. So there you go. He's putting even more money uh, into cryptocurrency, but like startup projects and things like that. And it sounds very uh, reminiscent sort of of Roger Ver. You know, he started Bitcoin Cash and they're having all sorts of problems and we're not even going to go into that. But he made a ton of money from Bitcoin Cash and he has invested heavily into almost anything in the crypto space from sort of 2017, 2018. Uh, he was invested in and I'm sure he's still investing in things now because, you know, those projects that he got into back then have probably done amazingly well and he'll just continue to do really well even if bitcoin cash uh, is to fail and it's having all sorts of issues uh, he doesn't have to worry uh, he, he's well looked after uh, and yeah well uh, ingrained in cryptocurrencies full stop so yes he's the bitcoin cash guy but he invested in a ton of other things. And I can't remember exactly what they are anymore, but it was basically everything. You name it, uh, he had a hand in it. All right, let's go over to the market cap. Have a look. Have a quick refresh. There's $483 billion there. All right, still $483 billion, so it's up 4%. We can see Bitcoin is pushing up again. I did suspect that the weekend... Uh, would have its retracement, which it did a little bit, you know, fluctuated here and there, and come Monday, uh, and it started to push up. So it's now going on to Tuesday afternoon uh, for here for us here in Australia, and that means it's going on to Tuesday morning, and I do suspect the price is going to continue to go up. I don't see any major retracements happening until maybe 20,000. There could be a heavy one around there. We hit 20,000 and really come back, maybe down to the $16,000, $14,000 level. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm thinking more 25000 to 35000 But, you know, we'll see how that pans out. Now, the gas price has pumped up a little bit. It was 57 earlier, so I'm not sure what's going on there. BTC dominance down a little bit, just under 64%. Uh, again, I do see this growing. Probably once we reach around sort of 20,000, 20, maybe it'll go up. I honestly thought it would uh, be higher earlier, but we'll have to wait and see. 
what I'm really waiting to see is if BTC dominance can push above 65% and maybe get up into the sort of 70% range. I think that's going to be more likely uh, when the next bear market comes. People will be wanting to put their money uh, into Bitcoin because it will, don't get me wrong, if based on previous history, it'll still drop a lot, but it drops less uh, than a majority of the other coins. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. All right, what about big movers over the last 24 hours? Okay, empty set dollar, never even heard of it, but they've had a pretty good 24 hours and had a pretty good seven days. But look, just about everything's had a pretty good seven days of late. Uh, Aave, very nice, continues to go up. Uh, very happy I got into Aave. Yearn Finance, uh, ranging sideways a little bit here, but you know, again, it's up 40% in seven days, so pretty good. Now Litecoin, Litecoin has really, really started to move and XRP. So it's about time. I was really worried about both these projects and 29 cents nearly pushing 30 cents for XRP. So that is uh, a great run for them. Uh, and we're going to go into the charts and sort of have a look at them. But, you know, we got some pretty good double digits and then we get into single digit uh, moves, which don't get me wrong, is still pretty good. And well done, Kyber Network. Uh, very happy with that. Sushi, uh, I did read something on Twitter that uh, Nuggets News said that apparently they've been doing a lot of developing, uh, I mean, 119% in seven days. So, look, good on those who are into sushi. I just don't trust it. And, you know, from all the issues that they had before, that's not to say it's no good, though. Uh, Synthetics Network, not too bad, 6.4%. Again, still up 11% in seven days. Uh, and ranging there, I think uh, it's going to have another... Uh, Good market. I think most of the DeFi projects, again, they're not done. I think they're going to pump the entire way through this bull run. Uh, it'll be cyclical. It'll pump up a lot, and then it'll have a heavy retracement, and then it'll pump up a lot again, and then it'll have a heavy retracement until we get to the cycle high, whenever that may be, and you know whatever price that may be, who knows? But I don't think DeFi is going anywhere. I think you know, particularly the good projects, and this is my opinion, not financial advice. Ave Synthetics. Oh God, what else is there? Kyber Network, you know, there's, there's a couple of good ones in there. I think they're going to be around uh, for the long term. Band Protocol, uh, having a bit of a move there, uh, $5.91. What about losses? Because there's always going to be some losses. Huh. It's actually not too bad in the end. So Maker down 2% and only down uh, just under 2% over seven days. Really, really small stuff. Uniswap. Of course, it was going to have some kind of pullback. It pumped forty percent, so yeah, not not to worry. Block stack again, small sort of stuff. Digibyte again, the seven day stuff is more really what you're looking at. You know, most of these had a fairly good pump, or or they you know haven't moved too much. All right, let's have a look. XRP. Now this is against the BTC chart. Now we can see this is where it bottomed out, and we can see it's got some sort of confluence here. It, it's just before a a bit of a price spike there and it's come down and retested this on occasions now what we're waiting to see and again this is against Bitcoin not against the dollar because Bitcoin's been way outperforming uh, XRP the only time I really like to compare altcoins against the dollar if they've simply outperformed Bitcoin but then again I still compare them to Bitcoin I take the both charts to get a better feel and a better under better understanding because if we compare Bitcoin against the dollar then why would we compare an altcoin that's well outperforming Bitcoin against Bitcoin you may as well compare it against the dollar at the same time and it'll give you a better feel for uh, the charts on both the dollar value and the BTC value but again Bitcoin's way outperformed XRP, so we're going against uh, the Bitcoin chart. And again, we can see it came down, touched here, dropped a little bit lower, pushed up, and it hasn't been back here since December 2017. We can see it's just had this big sort of bear market uh, against Bitcoin. And then we've come down and just, again, we can now raise this up. So that really should be around about there. All right, stop there for me. All right, so now what we're waiting to see is if this is going to hold. Again, it's got some confluence here. It's been here support uh, before. Uh, what's been resistance uh, has become support uh, and vice versa. So we can see that twice it's kind of touched down here. Touched down here, bounced up. Touched down here, 
uh, tested it again and now has bounced right up. And now we really have to wait and see what XRP is going to do. But if we go back here and we go back and see XRP, 18% in seven days that's pretty good and again we haven't seen xrp at 29 cents uh for quite some time so we're just waiting to see how it does and whether it can outperform uh the granddaddy now don't get me wrong i think bitcoin's uh going to continue to move and has got has got a bit more in it litecoin i did talk about this just the other day i said have we hit the bottom down here uh against bitcoin because uh, it had that little pump up and then i was like are we going to retrace and pump up again and that's exactly what we've happened. And I, you know, I suspect that this is going to continue. Litecoin is an oscillator. And I think a lot of this has to do with PayPal. Again, cryptocurrency is now available to PayPal users in the US. And eventually it will be worldwide. Uh, they opened it up to uh, the Americans very quickly. Because, again, they saw the, the exuberance from it. Uh, and how much money Cash App, was, uh, Square Cash App and things like that were making. So bang, straight away within a few days. It's only been out a few days. And look at this. People are going to go to PayPal and they're going to see uh, Bitcoin Cash cost $200 to buy one. Okay, Ethereum, it costs 400 and something dollars to buy one. Bitcoin, okay, it costs, you know, $16,000 to buy one. It's human psychology. They're simply going to go for the cheaper one uh, hoping that it'll do the same and look I think Litecoin uh, has got a good future ahead of it because it's really like Bitcoin and because it's been regulated uh, by by the SEC and all the rest of it and banks are allowed uh, custody and all the rest of it that has made it right there it is going to do well in my opinion uh, and I, I think it's going to be around for the long term because it basically is Bitcoin it's a little bit faster there's more of them uh, and it it's a bit of a test test net for Bitcoin, which is, which is a bit disturbing there because if Litecoin, uh, Litecoin could fail one day if it puts out something that doesn't work. Uh, but really, again, that's what it really does is it tests things, uh, SegWit and all the rest of it. Now it's got Mimble Wimble going and that'll probably uh, move on to Bitcoin at some stage in the future. But I see Litecoin uh, as being something that's going to stick around because again it's decentralized no one really owns it it really is a copy of bitcoin just a little bit faster and there's more of them there's 65 million litecoin available but it's got 85 i think 80 million or 85 million let me have a look litecoin what do we got i think it was 80 million 84 million there we go we got 84 million circulating supply so there's still about 20 million uh, Litecoin to be mined and that's what makes me think big business are going to have a real hot crack at Litecoin because it's like Bitcoin uh, but it's not really late in the piece where there's not too many left don't get me wrong there's a lot of Litecoin that's been mined already most of them but still 20 million to go as opposed to Bitcoin's only got 2 million uh, Bitcoin to go so I expect institutions are going to start to heavily get invested in Litecoin because it's early enough that they can get a really good foothold and for a really cheap price. Don't get me wrong, I don't think Litecoin uh, is going to price appreciate to where Bitcoin is. It's not that it couldn't ever, it's just unlikely, but I think there's still massive upside for it and I think institutions are going to get on board. Just my personal opinion. All right, last but not least, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And I did say the other day, you know, we broke out and I expected us to come back and test this line here, but then I thought we would bounce. And hey presto, what have we done? We bounced. And now we're back here around this kind of $16,600 range. Look, it is possible that there's going to be a heavy retracement. Previously, there's been, you know, 30, 40% retracements uh, a number of times. I just don't think it's going to happen at the moment. I think if we are to give a, get a heavy retracement, it's going to be once we reach the all-time highs. But let's have a look here at the moment. If we were to have a heavy retracement from here, all right, getting back down to the $13,800 level, 
uh, is only a 17% retracement. So yeah, again, I, I just don't see any heavy retracements at the moment from Bitcoin. I think there's too much institutional money getting in. Uh, and I heard something the other day that there's another really big company that's just filed um, papers with the SEC saying they wanted to get get into Bitcoin. Uh, and again, the really big institutional buyers, they have to get permission to do it first. And they're still coming. So that's what makes me think we won't see any major retracements anytime soon. I think, you know, maybe it's sort of 20,000. So I think maybe at 20,000 here. And so we'll scale out so we can see this. It's definitely possible we could get uh, a retracement here and maybe a big one. Again, if we were to retrace from 20,000, it was roughly thereabouts, 19,000 sort of 500. There we go. Uh, and come back to the $13,800 level. That's only a 28% retracement, but that seems generally reasonable. A sort of, you know, 30 to 40% retracement is what we've seen uh, previously when we're on big bull runs. I just don't see it happening at the moment. I think we could see it here, but even then, I'm just not sure. I think. You know, any Bitcoin that hits the market at the moment is pretty quickly being bought up. Now there's two, I think there's two million Bitcoin available on the exchanges at the moment. Now that's just the exchanges. Uh, a lot of the, you know, big companies and things like that, they're gonna do the OTC buying and whatnot. So it won't be until that stuff starts to get bought up that we'll really see the price I appreciate. And don't get me wrong, it is being bought up. But it's, you know, big companies aren't just going to go out and go, right, yeah, we've got, let's say, $45 million we want to invest in Bitcoin and go to Binance and buy $49 million worth of Bitcoin in one big hit. It'll push the price up too high. They know that. Everyone's aware of the micro strategy uh, investing uh, method. I 100% believe it is being copied. Uh, it is being played out by a number of uh, big investors at the moment. So they're just buying small pieces bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. Yes, the price will continue to go up, but not like if they just put in one order for $45 million worth of Bitcoin. That would send the price sky high uh, and they would only get a very small percentage filled at that original price. And then the last uh, parts of the Bitcoin, they'd be paying exorbitant amounts. So it's small amounts that are being bought every 50 seconds, I think is what MicroStrategy did. And that is why, sorry, fix this up. And that is why this just continues to go up. And I don't see it coming back anytime soon. And no major retracements, because anytime it drops down low enough, someone's buying it. And that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment. Like, you know, a dollar cost average, if Bitcoin, uh, it doesn't matter what price Bitcoin is doing, I'm buying Bitcoin all the way to 20,000 as long-term hodl. I don't plan on selling any of that. After 20,000, it will all depend on what the cycle high is. Because I'm not gonna try and time it exactly perfectly. I'm just going to get to certain points and I'm gonna sell a little bit and sell a little bit and sell a little bit. And again, let's say I see it at 300,000. You know, let's say it makes it to 300,000. I'll have some sell orders set for under 300,000, maybe at about sort of 280,000, 250,000, 240,000. So yes, I probably won't sell any at the peak high, but that way, if it continues to go higher above 300,000, then I just start to move those sale points up to follow it, to trail it. That's my plan, because I don't know exactly what the top price is gonna be, but once it gets to uh, above, uh, again, really I'm thinking about 100 sort of thousand, 150,000, I will start to have, uh, I will start to scale out uh, minor, you know, percentage points of the Bitcoin that I'm willing to sell. Again, so whatever I have, I'll say 10% of the Bitcoin that I'm willing to sell, uh, I'll sell at 100,000. 
and again this is just kind of rounding it off it probably won't be that uh, it could be uh, a lot lower or a lot higher depending on where we are it's more a time frame it's more around that September uh, December time next year that is really when I'm going to start to sell uh, it's not to say I won't sell any before I may take some profits earlier but I just know that that's generally going to be you know based on previous history where the cycle high is likely to be it's not guaranteed it could be a little bit earlier it's more likely going to be a little bit later again the the bam the sorry the bull markets they're getting longer and they're pushing out so it may not come to you know 2022 i'm thinking more september to december 2021 but yeah we'll wait and see so yeah no i don't see any big retracements coming until maybe we get up around about here and look it might come a little bit earlier again it might be sort of 18,000, you know where we see a fairly big retracement and again we pull way down to here definitely possible i just i think it's unlikely all right love to know your thoughts uh, on you know what what are your price points that you think you're going to sell out? Uh, it's not sell out. Start to sell and take some profits. Or are you just simply a 100% long-term holder? What are your thoughts on Coinbase? Do you think there should be an investigation into these guys? Uh, I definitely think there should. The regulators should have a look at this. I think it's price manipulation um, and market manipulation. But that's just my personal opinion. And what about the Skype co-founder keeping his... Uh, fortune in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Do you think that that's a good idea and would you copy uh, and follow suit? All right, stay safe, be kind to one another, hit that like and subscribe button down below. I hope you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.